much for coming out tonight. It's so great to see all of y'all for our third week of Family Science Night. We're going to start out tonight with a couple questions about you and your experiences and say, what is... So what are some of your experiences with temperature extremes? What's, for example, the hottest thing you've held or the coldest thing that you can think about? What's the hottest thing you've held? Okay, I'm going to take a couple of them. Yes, I'm there. The sun. You've held the sun? But it's hot, though. I'll give you that. It's real hot. So, the sun. What else kind of things? Ice. Okay, really cold. Hot water. So, something like boiling water you cook with. That's great. So, what we're going to talk about tonight is how do we make use of these different hot and cold set, you know, when things have different temperatures, how can we use them to make some uh, properties, some sense of energy? Okay, so who can remind me real quickly, what did we learn last time? Exactly, that's great, thank you. So cold air is sank, you remember it goes down to the ground, and then the warm air rises up to the surface. Kind of like in this picture here, we have the red arrow, that hot air goes up, it cools down, and that blue arrow comes down as the cold air sinks. And you kind of see it in the house, which is off to your left, when you see the cold air comes into the bottom of the house, and as it heats up, it rises up and leaves the house up there on the right. Now, if you remember, um, from, the house, from the houses that we built, convection is movement of heat through the air, through a fluid, if you remember. And today we're going to learn about two other ways that heat can move. And that's through one, conduction, and two, radiation. So conduction is when heat uh, travels from one object to another or through an object by direct contact. When, uh, when a hot object is touching a colder object, heat will move. Now we're going to do a little demonstration to see how easy heat moves through an object. And this is called thermal conductivity. The easier it is to move heat through an object, the higher the object's thermal conductivity. And when an object has a lot of molecules or density, do you guys remember density from last week? How much stuff is in an object? We're going to do a little demonstration to show how density uh, is related to how heat moves. Which one seems like it would be easier to do. Alright, ready? Alright, perfect. Thanks guys. You can all sit down. Which one would be easier to do over a long period of time? Would it be easier to just turn or would it be, e or would it be easier to walk to the person next to you? Yeah, exactly. So as we can see, when there's higher density or more stuff in an object, like this, it's easier to transfer heat. So there are two things. There's conductors and there are insulators. A conductor is something that easily transfers heat or has a high thermal conductivity. And these include things that you cook with, like pots and pans and a teapot. So the heat directly touches the pot and heat is transferred and it boils your water. Next, there's something called insulators. And these do not allow heat to transfer easily. When you're trying to get a hot object out of the oven, use an oven mitt because the oven mitt does not allow the heat to transfer from the pan to your hand. And as we remember, heat always travels from hotter objects to cooler objects. So in the winter, when your body is cold, you wear a jacket so that your heat doesn't go from your body to the outside air. Warren's going to demonstrate kind of how an insulator might work. Thanks, Josh. Great job. Okay, I have two balloons up here with me, and I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows what's in them. So can somebody tell me, here, let me see, I'm going to show this to you. What's in this balloon right here? Is that just air? Okay, and how about this one? Water. There's some water in there, right? Okay, good. So who can tell me, I just need a couple opinions. What's going to happen if I light a match under this balloon? Um, okay, let's hear. Yes, you up front? gonna pop. Okay, so got my match and I'm gonna put it here under the balloon. So you might cover your ears. Okay, so it popped. Good, we anticipated that. Now I got here my balloon water. I need a similar run of hypotheses. Who can tell me what they think is going to happen when I light a match under it? It's gonna what? Nothing's gonna happen? Man, what's why would nothing happen? I mean that one just burned up pretty quickly. Okay, so I got my match again here. What's happening? 
Nothing's happening. Using the idea of insulators and the transfer of heat, who can tell me what's going on here? I need a couple sentences. The, the what? It has water. It has water. So what's, what does that mean? This heat's coming from this match, and instead of going into the blue, where is the heat going? Let's see, I'm going to reach over there. Yes. In the water. So the idea is that what this balloon and the water have some kind of conduction going on between them such that the heat from the match is going through the balloon and into the water. And what does that mean? There's not so much heat in the balloon, it doesn't blow up. Josh talked about conduction and heat, you know, heat thermal conductivity. I'm talking to you about radiation real quick. So radiation is basically when I don't touch anything, but there's some heat source and it heats up my hand. You know, if we're out in a cold night, do you like to sit around the fire? Why do we have a fireplace in our home? When it's cold, it, it warms us up, right? So do you feel, you feel warmer when you sit next to a fireplace on a cold night? That's radiation there for you. You sit there, but are you actually touching the fire? Anybody actually touch fire? You shouldn't do that. No, nope, I'm telling you no. Okay, don't, you don't touch the fire, but you still get warm. That's radiation. Colors and radiation can kind of go hand in hand with conductors and insulators. So when you're going out and it's a hot day and you're going to go running, si está y van a ir a salir a correr, what color shirt are you going to wear? ¿Qué color de se van a poner? Okay, let's take a couple of suggestions. I'm going to start over here this time. White? White? Okay. Say, say as I'm pointing to you. What do you got? White. White? Yes, in the back. White? Light color shirt. Light color shirt. Now what if you are going and it's um, cold outside? ¿Qué colores usarían si van a correr afuera y hace frío afuera? Yes. Dark blue. Sorry? Dark blue. Dark blue. Okay, excellent. How about you have one more? Black. Black. Okay. Black. Black. Well, one of the things is in absorption, if you take it in, what does it mean absorb? You put water in the sponge and it takes it in. Well, that's what dark colors do with heat. That's heat, like these particles, these little balls here are like heat coming in. It collects and gathers heat. That's dark colors, whereas light colors reflect it off. So you get warmer when you're on the right side. You take it in, and you're cooler if you have colors which reflect heat. Who's ready to build something now with me? Okay, that's what I thought. We need to get on to building stuff. So what are we gonna build today? All right, today we're gonna build something to, say you have some ice cream, and you wanna take it with you to like the beach or something. You mean we're gonna build an ice cream bowl? An ice cream bowl. That's awesome. Guys. Exactly. We're going to build our cup. We're going to have a cup here. We have styrofoam cups for you guys. And we have, uh, we have different materials that you, can, that you can wrap around your cup to try and keep the ice cream, or we're going to put water in it as the ice cream, try and keep your ice cream as cold as possible. What we're going to do is we're going to take our hair dryer, like it's the sun, and basically heat your water on your cup for one minute and we're going to see using a temperature device a thermometer we're going to see whose water is the coolest so it's going to be like an ice cream machine you're taking to the beach you want your ice cream to stay cold as you get there so we're going to see who can design who, which engineer in here is going to design one of the most efficient ones that keeps the ice cream the coldest so for this project, we're going to have three materials. You're going to have the choice of all these ones that we have up here to choose three materials. Then we're going to heat your cup up from the bottom. And you want to put the materials on there that you think is going to heat cold inside your glass and keep that heat from the hair dryer out. We have five options. you got to choose three. So you have balloon, construction paper, tin foil, bubble wrap, and styrofoam. So why don't you all take a few minutes and think about which ones you're going to use which one has the, less amount of, the least amount of conductivity, and write down those three here in the constraint section. You got bubble wrap, construct, oh, and the construction paper is going to go below here? Or where, where's, uh, what, what are your three materials? Uh -huh. Okay, so what do you have there? What do you have, so that has the, is it a bubble wrap inside? Okay, that's great. And then tinfoil, and then where's your third material going to go? Think, think about that one. <laughs> we can try it out, and we're going to test it, and then afterwards, 
we're gonna we're gonna give you a chance to redesign too, and then we'll get you we'll let you uh, try it again for those of, for those of you who want to redesign, which would be a good thing to do, right? Finally, there you go. When you come in, we're gonna test them. We we'll go up to the front and keep your ice cream cold like two minutes, okay? Come back and see me then. Hi, bud. Awesome, buddy. So everybody has the same amount of water. I precisely measured these. So they all have the same amount of water. For one minute, which one's going to be warmer? If I have more water, lots of water, or less water, which one's going to be warmer? Less water? So that's exactly right. Less water, there's less stuff to heat up. Less Because what's water made up out of? Those little molecules. So less molecules to heat up means that it's going to heat up faster. There's going to be a bigger temperature change. Oh, we'll see. We'll see, it's going down. We're gonna wait for it to to kind of level out first, so that we can really tell how much heat goes into the water. Okay. So where's the heat back in here? Give me that water. Into the water, yeah. All right. So good job. So it went from 71 to 71.8. So it went up 0.8, right? So if you wanna remember 0.8. If you want, you can redesign and you can choose new materials and you can try and get it so that next time your the temperature goes up less than 0 0.8 degrees. Okay. Good job. Okay, what's your number? Okay, 71.0. All right, let's try this out. So, go in 30 seconds. He's holding real steady there, right? Is he going up or down a lot? Up and down a little bit? Not very much though, yeah. So how much is yours changing? Only point one. Perfect. So point one, that's pretty good. What did you have in the bottom there? The cardboard? Yeah, and some, it feels like styrofoam in there, right? Styrofoam, the white stuff? Yeah, white, styrofoam. So Gordon, right down in yours, point one is your only change. That means your ice cream is really cold. Good job. Same the same, right? So that means it's good insulator, right? Because it's keeping the heat up. Very good. That means you've picked some good materials. Okay, do you have any good? What's your what's your temperature like? Uh, this is your second what do you see? Seventy point four. Okay, great. Let's try it out. So it's twenty five. You ready? I'm gonna hold on to here so you don't hear me. Okay, you ready? One, two, three. Here's what's happening. Stand the same. Keep it in the water. Keep it in the water. What's going on right now? 70.7. So you put this to come to me. And then. Is anything in So what happened to yours? Stayed the same. That's good. Your ice cream stayed cold, right? right. Good job on your second design. That's awesome. It stayed the exact same temperature. Is that what it is? What's going on? What happened? Got one. That's pretty good. 70.2. Almost there. Yeah. You got it. There we go. That's 30 seconds. So what do you see now? 70.2. 70.2. So yours didn't change that much. Is that good or not so good? 70.3? Okay. It's good. Why? Just a little change. So what happened to the ice cream? It would be cold. What's happening with it? Going up how much? One? Not so much. Right now what's it doing? 70.2 only? And almost there. Yes. What happened? Mm -hmm. What materials do you have here? Just a little bit. So how much was your total change? Uh, you, 10, 70 degrees? Yeah, that sounds great. That's pretty, is that small or pretty big? Pretty good, yeah. What do you think, what do you think kind of made that? Which one is, what's good insulator? What's a good conductor here? Okay. The styrofoam? So what does this do so here if it keeps that heat out? And what does it say? Insulates, exactly. Good job. Our ice cream made it to the beach. <laughs> awesome. You want to take this home with you? Okay, great. I'll pour this water out for you. Let's turn the water to go. And there you go. Good job. Muchas gracias a ustedes. Nos vemos la semana que viene.